So good morning, good afternoon, and good evening. And this is for the fourth part of the cycle, um, the cycle of humanity. We spoke about life is the first post. Spoke about suicide is the second long post. Then we spoke about the afterlife, and now I'm going to talk about death. So death is the finality of humanity. It's the, it's the death of every human being, um, whether you believe in reincarnation or so forth. But death in the physical form is the irreversible. CS cessation of all biological forces that sustain an organism, so they, they, they finish, everything that happens. The idea of this is the functioning of the whole brain, um, including the brainstem. Brain death is sometimes used as a legal definition of death. Um, they claim that one of the last things of our actual, when we die, is our ears go, our hearing goes. So we actually hear things the most. That's why actually when people go and whisper to their partner, something that they love you or whatever, it's because that's the last thing that goes on the human body. Um, then obviously the idea of the remains of an organism begin to decompose shortly after death. And it's an inevitable process that occurs in all organisms. So then it goes into this situation of the idea of many cultures and religions believe in the concept of the afterlife, sometimes hold the judgment of good and bad deeds in one lives. And then there's different customs for funeral, cremation or sky burial. And there's another thing as well, which most people do, if you're an atheist, you don't believe there is anything after. Once you've had your life, that's it. You go into nothingness and you don't exist. Um, I don't believe that's true, obviously through what I do with my work, but if that's what people want to believe, then that's fine. I, I, don't, I don't want to get into an argument with them, as far as I'm that their opinion, as long as they don't inflict their opinions to make out that I should change because to believe them, but that's up to them what they want to do. So, one of the next things I think is very important about death is the idea of what happens when you die. So people in most societies believe in the idea of we should have funerals. So the idea is the funeral is the celebration of someone's life and that's with a death. Now people have got different reasons how they die. There's stages of death. So for example, respiratory arrest, there's no breathing, cardiac arrest, is there's no pulse, brain death, there's no neural activity. And the stages that follow death are palomortis, which is paleness, which appears, happens in 15 to 120 minutes after death. Algomortis is the reduction in body temperature following death. This is gradually a steady decline until matching ambient temperature. Uh, rigor mortis is the limbs of the corpse become stiff and difficult to move or manipulate. Liver mortis, the setting of the blood in the lower dependent portion of the body. Putrefi uh, putrefication is the beginning signs of decomposition. Decomposition, the reduction in the simpler forms of matter accompanied by a strong, unpleasant odour. Skeletization, the end of decomposition where all soft tissues have been de decomposed, leaning over the skeleton and fossilization. So the idea of legality of death is people don't believe in euthanasia, which so someone's dying of, again, seems euthanasia is seen as the same as suicide. And they mention about different ways of death. So they reckon the most common form of death is cancer and then heart attacks and then so forth. Um, but then obviously they have many different ideas of some people die way before they even have a life. So stillbirth is where a delivery of a fetus ends up they can't live. Miscarriage as we know with women when they can't give birth or they try to give birth and they, then something happens. And it actually happens in a lot of pregnancies that it's actually 12 to 15% of all pregnancies have miscarriages. So it's quite a high number. Abortion, obviously, is where people, abortion may be performed to do pregnancy from rape, so forth, and teenage pregnancy, lack of support from a significant other. You've got places like America which bans abortion, fuck knows why, because the idea is if, you know, if someone is raped, they don't really want to have a baby from their rapist. Um, I think that, that there should be some mitigating circumstances. I gather they obviously don't want people just to have children and then have abortions like it's willy-nilly. I get it, but it's a very sensitive subject. And also why men make these rules when they don't actually have a baby is, is a bit beyond me. But anyway, people believe in the idea they can increase their life span, uh, life span through anti-aging methods, plastic surgery, different diets and so forth. Again, when your life is up, it's up. 
Then there's the idea of cr uh, chronics, uh, cr uh, cr uh, cryogenics, which is the cryoprivation of people or large animals. Um, and it's not reversible with current technology. So people can be frozen, but they can't unfreeze them and make them live again. So again, kind of a bit pointless, really. Um, but people do it. Um, and then we also got the idea of society and culture, how we see death. So most people don't talk about death very much. Death is a very much a subject they people very find very difficult to talk about. Um, the idea of knowing that they're going to die, the idea of that, and some people come to terms with it. And the idea of this is then about how do we then honour that person if they die. So, you know, death is personified in many cultures. So the idea of um, in many cultures, the, rep the Grim Reaper is represented, or Angel Lamorte, which is the angel of death. Hindu god Yama is also um, the, the god of death and father time and so forth. Um, so, example, it's just very well different to the death. But I think what the biggest issue is, is about how we get rid of... Um, how oh, Sorry, get rid of, that's a wrong word. Is how we then decide to celebrate that death. So most people will be buried because of their religious beliefs or their ideas. Now, what I think is very interesting is that if people are atheists, a lot of atheists seem to get buried. Well, if they don't believe that they exist anymore, then they should really do cremation because the idea is the body doesn't have any significant worth. It's just decomposing. So the idea to me is that if you're atheist or you're Hindu or Jehovah Witness, then you should have cremation. And I believe in cremation because I think that cremation is a cleaner way of getting rid of bodies. I think the idea of putting bodies in a wooden box, filling up graveyards and filling up spaces is wasteful. It seems to be also that I feel it's a way that people don't let go. Now, to me, if you had a gravestone and that's the honouring of where you think that person is, that's fine or have a memorial. But the idea of people being buried in a coffin and then put in the ground, I mean, they don't exist anymore. Their spirit has gone. And so it's interesting that still in most of the Western world, we believe most things are burials, but cremations are going up. And I think with the amount of disease and so forth, if someone dies of cancer, you know, if your body's rotting of cancer, why would you want to go into like the ground? Or if you died of COVID, you wouldn't want to get rid of that cremation, get rid of it, get rid of them things. Get rid of like, because once your body has gone, you're not there anymore. I mean, it gets to the point that really, as much as, you know, burial in a, in a, in a funeral box is, is, it's like, it's kind of like taxidermy in some respects. It's like, you know, if, it's like taxidermy, people stuff animals. I mean, like if your dog died, you're not going to stuff your dog and have your dog like in the hallway looking at you. It's weird. It's very, that to me is strange. And I think burial is the same. I, I see burial as a completely, it's a way of people not letting go. It's not, it's not coming to the full realisation that that person's life is ended. And only thing that exists is their spirit and their memories and what they've done. And the idea of this keeping people in a box and burying them, I think it's, it's so archaic. And it's and to be honest, it's just, what's going to happen? I mean, this is the fact of the matter. If you've got loads of places where they're burying people, do you honestly think that that person's buried there for the, for the two, three, four, five hundred years when they die? No. Well, if, if they need to get rid of people, they'll move you. I, I would imagine that most places where they have a burial spot, I don't reckon most of the people are there, they've probably already been got rid of. They just have. It's just like you can't you can't only can have a so finite space of land. So to me, I just this is this is quite you know, people may not like this opinion, but I just think if someone wants to be if someone passes away, they they've passed. And it's something I've also found is very interesting that people have a thing that they can use their body parts. So the NHS, if you die, they can take your body parts and you reuse them. Now, and the, and the funeral people can do this as well. They can sell these body parts to the NHS or the NHS can take them. Um, and this is in England. And I just think that's ridiculous. To me, if, if, if your body parts are good, the people who should be making money out of your body physically should be your family, not a funeral parlor. 
So this comes into an ethical thing as that one thing I, I am opted out. I don't in the NHS thing, I'm opted out. I do not allow that people can use my body parts for people. And I will actually make sure that my family, whoever is around, will make sure that doesn't happen. Because the only people who should be able to use my body parts before I'm cremated is my own family. And they should then, then body parts could be put or frozen or used. And then if say someone needs a new heart or something like that, then that is something that my family could say, right, we will give that person his heart to someone else. Now the trouble is with body, with also organ transplanting is I have a big issue with it. Now Jehovah's Witnesses don't believe in organ transplant or blood transfusion. Um, I don't believe in organ transplant very much either because they've done things, for example, where they found a heart and a drunken man has died, an alcoholic, and then they've put a heart in someone healthy and then that person ends up being an alcoholic. Now, whether that's true or not, or it's just coincidence is, is a big thing. But to me, I find that the idea of, I don't know people who are on dialysis. Um, my, um, I called her my auntie, um, uh, she was in San Antonio and she was on dialysis, Anita. And they put on dialysis, they would give a new kidney, everything like that. And she was on it. And it made her life, it was painful. Her life was not great. She couldn't do half the things. And so to me, they were prolonging her life by giving these people's parts, body parts, and some of them were rejected. Some of them didn't work. Some of them made her more ill. She put on a lot of weight. You know, it, it's it's not for everyone. But I do understand, and I understand if, you know, if some say it was a child and they and they was they could get someone's heart and make them live that's fine and again this is just my personal opinion in my opinion but i do think there's a lot of things where i think this kind of frankenstein kind of idea of taking someone's limbs and taking someone's body parts and putting them in people i still don't think science is good enough to make that work so it actually actually is compatible so to me i do think that you know, as much as I would get cremated, if they want to take my body parts out and they think there's things that are useful, um, probably not my brain, but I mean, you never know, um, then I think that should be then for the family to then be able to sell or give them give them body parts to people. Because for example, like I wouldn't like the fact is if I knew, for example, that my body parts were taken from the NHS and they put a heart into a bloody rapist. I wouldn't like that. To me, I don't, it's, it's an ethical thing. I just think it's wrong. So to me, I do think that this is something I think people should be very wary of with death, is that once you are finished, your body's finished, the body parts, if they want them, is you, the family should be able to have their body parts with a medical institution, and then they would decide, and the medical institution phones them up and says, right, this person's coming up, they need this, they need that, and then the family make that decision where their body part goes to. And I think that's very ethical, I think that's a good use of the body parts, Instead of it just being, you know, rotting in a bloody court in a bloody box. And then the cremation idea is if the ash they can make, then if you do cremation, you can make ashes into plants, you can make them into diamonds, you can make them into paintings. Again, this idea of this idea of reusing and, you know, being recycling and all these ideas is environmentally better for us. And I think if people, it's like it's quite interesting, all these people talk about just oil and they talk about, you know, the environment, but then they they want to be buried. I mean, like, how can you honestly tell me you're an environmentalist, but then you want to be buried and rotting in the ground? It's just weird. I, I just find it very, I find that a problem for me. Um, however, like I said, the idea is... I, I feel that wherever I'm buried or, you know, I'm not buried, sorry, cremated is going to be important and I think then that's the idea that my family will respect my wishes um, and I think also this is something I like as well is that in all my family my grandfather was cremated my mum will be cremated and has no service my father was cremated they had to put him in a box because he would he died of colon cancer so he's they reckon he was rotting and so they had to, they had to have a proper thing of that because of that but again he was cremated you know he was put in a coffin and then he was burned like why did he need a big box why did he need them things and also to me i think the funeral business is a big money maker and i think it exploits people's you know sentimentality 
I don't like it. I, I find it very bad. Whereas deaf should be honoured. And I don't think this is honouring the deaf. I think this idea of, you know, saying to someone, oh, they want to be created. Right, we're going to charge you 3500 for, for a funeral box. Really? I mean, so you're going to charge me 3500 back for, to be buried. And then you're going to charge the same person who wants to be buried. Whereas the person who wants to be cremated, you're burning the box. So again, it just it, I just find that very, very hypocritical. And then the idea of this, you know, I mean, sometimes some people to be buried can cost as much as, you know, little as little to actually be buried in the box, put in the ground. It's as much as £10,000. I mean, really, where, where's that money you could use? That to me is not celebrating life. But anyway, so, yeah, when we go into death, the idea of how people die and how that works. But to me, I think as much as we honour people in their lives with awards and and you know, decorations and how we treat them. In death, we should respect them as well, equally. Um, and like I said, maybe because I'm not so strictly religious, but I do feel that we need to look at death and we look at the way of how we deal with people when they died, I think needs to be very much reviewed in society. And I think long term, I think cremation should be done more um, because I cannot see how the, the the way it works now of burial sites and everything, I can't see that's going to last. Where's all the land coming from? Where is people going to be buried? Are they really going to be honoured? I just think it's just a waste of space. You know, once you're gone, when you live, great. You live, treat the living well. Respect people who live. Respect them when they're there. You can't replace people, but you can replace items. You can replace books, you can replace everything else, but you cannot replace people you can't replace animals in some respects either if you've got a pet or something but with humans you definitely can't replace them even if they get reincarnated anyway so that's the cycle of humanity four parts any qu any questions any comments want to disagree agree please holler at me i've looked at clouds from both sides now and up and down and still somehow it's cloud illusion